Hey guys. So as the title suggests, I bought a forklift. Now, why did I buy a forklift? Well, why not buy a forklift? Yeah, that, that's my answer to that. So moving on. The history of this is that it was owned by uh, a couple that had a body shop and they used it around the body shop to move cars around and stuff. So they were retiring and decided to liquidate. They said it was running when they parked it 10 years ago. I said, okay, well, we're making progress. What's the model? No idea. What is the year? No idea. Well, why did you park it? We parked it because we couldn't find parts. Well, and then in my head, I'm like, well, you wouldn't find parts if you didn't know what year or model you were looking for. So that's, that's kind of important. But they got a newer model. I did find out what this is. It is a Hoister H50H 1974. Now, I looked at a lot of pictures. I tried to go off with some cues as to how to find this out. And <clears throat> this is for all of the hoister people. If you um, look at the engine, the engine's where I would start. And then also underneath this panel or on the frame here, there is a part number, or sorry, a serial number. This serial number is not the serial number. I know, that sounds odd. But it's missing digits, and it's also missing a letter at the end. But a lot of people on the forums have this serial number. This is really a D003D4226 some letter. That letter indicates the year. The D3 or the D003 indicates the model. So... Let me tell you guys how I found out the information. I called a hoister dealer and I told them this serial number. They had no idea what it was because they said that doesn't exist, but someone at hoister, the corporation, which is also Yale, may know. So he, he, he was going to email them and I said, you know what, just give me their information because I don't really like middlemen. And let me call them directly. So I did that. They emailed their warranty department and the warranty department emailed me back and said, this is what we believe you have. And they gave me a nice little tag that said the, the I guess the ticket order creation date, the actual build date, as well as the model and year and all that good stuff. So, this is a 1974 H50H. You could also measure the wheelbase and, or, sorry, not necessarily the wheelbase, but from the edge to, I guess, this point here. The, the book says it, but you have to know the model to look the manual up to know that. But that's a little trick you can do. Call your dealer. They can do all that rest for you. Now, this is a F... Uh, Ford uh, 192 engine. I believe it also came with a 172 and Some people you know in the past hooked them up and bored it out and made it a 192 and changed over the head gasket So from what I understand it has some head gasket issues between two and three cylinders two and three. It's a four-cylinder but I did I did do my due diligence Don't get me wrong. I have no idea about forklifts and I don't know any experts that I could go with that knows about forklifts. I paid $600 for this. So in scrap, I can probably get my money back. It weighs 9,500 pounds. So this counterweight alone will make me my money back. So I'm not really out much. Now, if any hoister people knows anything, can you let me know what that is? I have no idea what that is or what it's for. Some wires are going from it. I have no idea. Um, in terms of the overall state, tires are, they're, they're bad looking. I think these have tubes and a liner because if this had a bead, 
it's not doing very well as you can see but I believe it's tube and bead so but I'm gonna change these this is a all-terrain type which is what I wanted I didn't want just the inside and I don't believe maybe I'm wrong this muffler belongs here because they seem to hodgepodge this and this was actually bent and kinked going up with a flex pipe with a flex tube for the exhaust and to me that would create a lot of back pressure I think it originally came out and went here because this is not an LP system uh, liquid propane it's strictly gas there's no there's no anything for propane here I think the exhaust the original one I don't think this is original it might be but I don't think so anyway I did check the fluids I checked for any leaks by the cylinders there and there there was no leaks and I checked the mass the chrome looks good here and on the other cylinder I don't see any leaks going on here it looks like they changed out a line here so those all look good so either all of the ones that are problems that is going to be very difficult to get to is the ones that they left alone or this was a decently maintained machine <laughs> time will tell first we have to get it started it doesn't start I tried to start it by jumping the battery but the battery is sulfated so that's no good right now I have to get another one they're about a hundred dollars um, what I when I tried to start it it clicked right there was a noise coming from over there I haven't been able to isolate the noise that's happening on this side but over here it was it was making like a like like a like a motor straining type of noise I did not know if the starter was bad I checked the voltage at the starter and there was voltage at the switch but my apparatus here is for bench starting. Now, I would not I would not recommend doing it this way, but you know, this is the way I'm doing it. So, I turned you on at this time cuz I figured it was a good point to make a video. I have it grounded as if it was in the vehicle. Um this don't mind this <laughs> but uh i have this on let's turn that on let's see if this is good i do have safety glasses on um so faded yeah i know oh wait yeah i know it's sulfated. wrong way let's turn that on should start giving me power. All right. Let's see that again. So, the solenoid and the motor works. Works good. So, that's not my issue. So, what that means is the motor is seized up a bit. Now, I don't, I might have to take off the head to try and get it to loosen up. Good time to change the head gasket. Also check the head, make sure that's good. And uh, I'm probably going to have to rewire this. So, cause I doubt I'm going to find a wire harness for that year. And it looks like what they did was that they went crazy with the paint. And painted everything, including the wires. So it would be either a matter of testing everything or just changing it all out. It's not that many wires. The gauge looks fairly new. The gauges. And I think this is a, um, I'm pretty, well, maybe it might be a manual, but I know it came with the automatic and a manual. Thinking that this is an automatic, that might be the clutch. 
I don't know. I don't even know what half these levers do. So I'm assuming this controls the main cylinder, maybe, or puts it in gear. Maybe it's a, uh, I have no idea. Right now, just need it to start. So I'm going to try and find a way to turn this motor over and kind of free it up and put this starter motor back in and if you look here you see that by the belt that is the amount of space I have between this like one inch block of metal and there to get a socket into they don't really leave you much room to turn the motor by hand so I'm coming at my wits end on what I'm supposed to do there so if anyone has any suggestions please let me know Otherwise, I do plan to make some more videos about the Mustang, and right now, things are chaotic with Corona and everything, so I'm taking it a little slower. I actually put on some of the body parts for psychological reasons, just to give motivation towards getting going on the car. So... That was strictly why these are on it. They, they have no other value. And obviously I moved the car to the shop and I made that homemade homemade dolly so I can move the car around. This was like a grand total of $40. So it's now in the main shop and I'm gonna be making some more videos. I do plan to TIG weld all of the little holes from when I epoxied it. So that's gonna take me a bit of time. I don't know if you guys even wanna see that. Let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, right now we're on this. This is, this is the new toy, you know? I love adding, you know, big heavy paperweights that, you know, I have no business dealing with. So, good times, all right. You guys have a good one. Be safe. Thanks for watching. See ya.